Welcome back to another video. As you can see, I've had a transplant on my hair. And if you haven't been up to date, this is what happened. <laughs> okay. You can check out my previous videos of uh, what happened during the entire procedure. In this video, I'm just going to uh, answer frequently asked questions about the, the whole ordeal. And uh, if you're thinking of getting a hair transplant, then this is the video for you to watch because I'm going to answer the most important questions that are probably on your mind right now. So let's get into it. Uh, why did you choose Korea uh, to do your hair transplant instead of Turkey, Thailand, Canada, or other places around the world? In the first video, I explained this a little bit. I'm from Canada, and where I'm from, the prices that they were charging was just way too expensive. Same with the US, same with Europe, same with Japan. These places on one end are really expensive, and on the other end, what are the really cheap options? Well, there's Turkey that comes up a lot and there's also Thailand which I also looked into but uh, I just didn't feel safe traveling or doing my hair transplant in these countries. There's an old saying, you know, you get what you pay for. So I'm sure, you know, there's a lot of horror stories that come out of Turkey and guys getting hair transplants over there trying to save a few bucks. So yeah, I knew what I was in for if I was going to go down that route. I was in Korea and I said, what the heck, let's, let's do it here. Korea was basically the best of both worlds. It's not too expensive like US, Canada or Japan. It's not too cheap and uh, like uh, iffy like Turkey or Thailand. And uh, you can see, it's been about 10 days since the procedure. And uh, a lot of these hairs are growing. It feels surreal. Next question, why did you choose partial shaving uh, FUE instead of full shaving or non-shaving. For those of you that don't know, uh, there is a full shaving option. So what they do is they shave your entire head down to the scalp before they do the hair transplant. The opposite of that is non-shaving, where they just they don't they leave your hair alone and they individually pluck the hairs at the back of your head. And then there's the best of both worlds, which was what I chose, which is partial shaving, as you can see. Full shaving is uh, the most common option that most men choose, all right? It's, it's the cheapest, it's the fastest. And the reason why I didn't like the full shaving option is because I've already shaved my head. And I know for a fact it takes about eight months for my hair to go back to this length, which is what I want. So I wanted something where I can just go back to work and look normal and no one would notice. And this was the best option for me, the partial shaving. They basically gave me a two block haircut. So if you're not familiar with the two block, it's basically like a mushroom cut where they shave the entire sides of your head so they can work on the donor area and they just leave the top. As you can see, if I style it just right, then no, you can't tell if I had a hair transplant or not. Yeah, I got a free haircut as well. And the fun fact is that if you choose a full shaving or partial shaving option, at Motion Clinic, which is where I got my hair transplant done, it's the same price. I'm very happy with my decision because now I have hair to work with on the top of my head so I can style it for the summer and uh, yeah, just wait for my sides now to grow up because they're really short. Now for the, the non-shaving, uh, it's the most expensive option and it's the most time-consuming option. Add on an additional two hours to the procedure. So, yeah, I didn't want to wait an extra two hours sitting in that chair. And uh, yeah, I just, I wanted to save some money as well. And like I said, partial shaving or full shaving is the same price. Okay, next question. Uh, how much did your procedure cost? Okay, so uh, for Motion Clinic, one FUE graft costs 5,500 Korean won, which equates to about $4.47. US okay times 2,000 graphs so the total came up to 8,940 US dollars so a little under nine grand US and if you are not from Korea if you're traveling to Korea to get your hair transplant you can get a tax refund on top of uh, getting a special discount yeah if you, if you choose to go with them so there you go next question how long did the entire procedure take the actual procedure itself uh, started at noon, so it was at 12 p.m. we started, and we finished a little under at 8 p.m. So those eight hours include the everything, so the, the, the morning meeting, the, the, the drawing of the hairline, uh, the final consultation, uh, shaving of the head, applying anesthesia, pulling out the 
the hairs and uh, attaching them and lunch time and the, the aftercare and bandaging and all that getting medicine yeah it took about eight hours in total so it, you really have to uh, yeah prepare for that day next question uh, during or after the procedure did you feel any pain okay a lot of people are asking did you feel pain because in the videos you saw a lot of blood coming out a lot of needles everywhere and here's what I can say about it uh, if you ever been to the dentist if you ever had Novocaine injected into your gums that's what it feels like okay there's a large needle and it's being inserted into you and it stings at first okay uh, but that sting goes away after a few seconds all right so just like uh, receiving Novocaine in, in the gum area right that that area starts to get cold it starts to get numb and then eventually you don't feel anything right? and then the, the doctors can get to work same thing with the anesthesia in the back of the head right the first few needles you can feel it you, it's just it's just like like Neo in the matrix like when they insert that uh, that that needle in the back of their head right entering the matrix that's what it feels like and I said that'll wake you up in the morning that'll really wake you up and then eventually yeah you don't feel anything and then when the doctor is ready to perform it feels like you're wearing a helmet that's the closest thing I can describe it as you're wearing this thick padded helmet and then uh, the doctor is working on the surface of the helmet I mean, you can't feel anything afterwards I didn't feel any pain after the anesthesia was applied the next day I did feel a lot of soreness in the back of my head that's for sure it's very itchy and it's very sore okay because there were like a thousand needles plucked in here and pulled out your grafts pulled out okay so yeah expect a lot of soreness itchiness and like real sensitive skin the back of your head I still feel it but what I do is I, I just rub the back of my head with an ice pack and uh, I take a lot of cold showers just dousing my hair with ice cold shower water and that just relieves the some of that pain next question are you currently taking any hair medication for example finasteride or dutasteride for me I'm not taking anything for now I can describe my hair as very thick and full okay aside from the hair that's receding the rest of my hair I have no problem with in fact I have the opposite problem as most people I have so much hair I have too much hair my hair is very thick heavy and full so uh, I'm holding off for now but we'll see In the next coming few months you know once this uh, once this hair grows then maybe I don't know who knows uh, next question how do you deal with travel quarantine issues in Korea due to COVID-19 restrictions okay this is a very important question especially those of you that are considering traveling to create to get a hair transplant okay so pay attention so for me my case was that I was in Korea before the pandemic broke I live and I work here in Korea actually so yeah I don't have a problem but for those of you that are not from Korea and are planning to travel to Korea to get a hair transplant here's what you have to be aware of first of all contact your local Korean embassy check with them first because the information that I give you in this video may be out of date but as of today uh, this is like June 1st 2020 anyone who comes to Korea uh, you have to go to a 14-day uh, quarantine okay so you have to stay at a, a government facility or a hotel you gotta stay there for 14 days and you have to pay for staying there as well so uh, the cost is going to be a 100,000 100,000 Korean won which equates to 82 US dollars a day to stay at these these quarantine facilities so after these 14 days then you can uh, you know, you're free to do whatever you want you could book an Airbnb you can go get a, your own hotel and then you can get started on your hair transplant procedure and for the hair transplant procedure itself you're going to need to spend at least five business days in Korea one day a procedure and then next few days you're going to have to like you know, do the, like, the cleaning and the post checkup in total I recommend that you book a flight to, and stay in Korea for at least three to four weeks rest relax do some sightseeing shopping tour around Seoul you're probably gonna do the, all that stuff so a, a good three to four weeks is enough to do all of that uh, next question any tips you can offer to newcomers who are preparing to get a hair transplant for the first time oh yes okay so based on my experience uh, here are the things that I noticed first of all eat a light breakfast I did not eat anything uh, 
for breakfast on the day of my procedure, okay? Uh, I usually skip breakfast actually, and I usually fast, I do intermittent fasting. And that was a bad idea, okay? Because uh, we had a really long day of filming and the procedure on top of that. We started at noon, and then lunchtime was like around 2.30 or 3 p.m. And by that time, I was starving. So I just scarfed down the meal that they gave me, which was pretty good. They provide you a lunch, a bento box, but you can, you can have any kind of lunch you want. If you just pre-order it, you want Subway sandwich or like pasta, whatever. Uh, second thing, bring some earbuds and a music player, okay? I did not bring anything. And uh, what happens is, during the procedure, you're lying down for several hours, staying still. And your eyes are closed by gauze, right? For protection. So well, what I would do differently is I would bring some earbuds and listen to music or a podcast while, while I'm lying there. Okay, because, yeah, there's nothing you can do. Just breathe and be, be present and just be patient. Another thing is I noticed that I'm not used to lying down on my back, flat on my back or flat on my chest for several hours. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not one of those people. So I felt a little bit of uh, lower back pain uh, late in the procedure. They do give you breaks. Like you can like tell them like, I want to use the bathroom. I need a five minute break. You can do that. And I, I took a few of those. But uh, if I had to do it differently, I would definitely uh, bring an ice pack or bring some muscle relaxant medicine. And again, like I said, you gotta lie down flat on your back or flat on your chest for several hours and stay still. I can't do that. So I need to move around, I need to fidget, I need to switch my legs around. And that's what I did. So just be prepared for that. Uh, the last question. Uh, I'm seriously considering getting a hair transplant in Korea, but I need assistance. Can you help me? Yes, actually I can. And I do provide full assistance to clients that are interested in traveling to Korea and getting a hair transplant done. So. My offer to you guys, those of you at home that are serious, getting a hair transplant, flying to Korea, and getting this thing done, and if you, if you need help, I want you to fill out the form down below. Okay, I left the form down below. An online consultation, we can have like a Skype call together, and I can answer all your questions, and uh, we can work out a plan together to bring your ass over here and get your hair fixed like I did, because I wish I had this kind of service before I was thinking of getting my own hair transplant. I really do, because when you think about it, you're spending thousands of dollars and you need to go to a foreign country that you, you don't know anyone there that you trust. And you don't speak the local language and uh, yeah, you're making a huge life decision. You need somebody on your side. What you got to do though is you got to click the link below and fill out the form and then we can get started talking one-on-one, okay? So, I definitely recommend you giving it a try, and uh, yeah, you have nothing to lose. So at the bottom of this video, I've left a link to all the questions that I've answered in this video for you guys to read over. Plus, uh, I've stapled uh, Motion Clinic's uh, frequently asked questions that they get a lot from clients over the years, okay? So take a look at that, that's attached as well in the document below, so click on that, and uh, yeah, Stay tuned for more videos on uh, just me updating my hairline, okay? So one month later, two months later, all that. Yeah, I can safely say that I'm really happy with my results because I don't have to worry about this hairline problem anymore. And just get it done and then you just move on with the rest of your life and do all this stuff. Let me know down below what you think. And if you have any other questions that I can help answer, yeah, just leave a comment down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this YouTube channel, like this video, and I'll talk to you next time, okay? Take care. Bye-bye.